Yes, indeed. In fact, if you compare his photographs with uh, previously with what he looked like yesterday, yesterday I was questioning whether he was competent to stand trial and wondering why they were going through the exercise and not not engaging with with that question. However, today he's sitting upright. He's wearing glasses. His lawyer is is right up there, putting his hand on his shoulder, trying to show a, a relationship. Whereas yesterday he wasn't. What are your thoughts? I, I completely agree with you, but people are human beings, obviously, and she is clearly nervous. And all of the preparation in the world, if you're not a trained attorney, goes out the window when you're sitting in that seat and there are people staring at you and this is a big deal. I don't know, it was a bit of a quick verdict. Were you shocked at all at the timing and how quickly the jury came back with a guilty verdict? Absolutely not, I'm not shocked at all, and here's why. There's a saying, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And with the release of this transcript and the publication of it, it's gonna bring people forward who may have information. Uh, Dr. Pearson, I'm watching Barrison's body language and we, we've gotta assume because the case is moving forward, he's competent to stand trial. But as you see him, are there some question marks about that? Yes, I, I would agree with you. He's presumed competent. However, the lawyer, if, if he is not able to assist in his defense, would have to bring that to the court's attention. There's, there's two things that are surprising to me about how, how this stuff works. One is that people are recruited into an organization under guise of diversity, thought diversity. But once you get there, there's this expectation that you shed that diversity and, and you, you become part of the cyborg, if you will. And stepping out of line is, is frowned upon. It's sort of like, uh, you know, don't go against the family. And then the second thing here is that uh, organizations are regularly messaging, we want you to come forward. We want you to tell us when you see something wrong. But then when you do it, either there isn't a response, it's not adequate, uh, or it's it's denied or not investigated. And that forces the person to step outside the organization to try to, to remedy the problem. And, and it's, it, these, these ironies exist. What for you was the most surprising information that you learned on your in your work on whistleblowing? Well, Tracy, I think you've really nailed it, that, that, that there's this disconnect between the PR and the reality of working at many organizations. And again, I want Let me ask you one more procedural question that just cropped up in my head, and that is, WADA comes up with the code, right? Mm -hmm. um, and But they are also, in essence, the prosecutors of these violations, sure. right? How does, how does that work? Um, Understanding that you can't diagnose someone that you've never seen, and I'm not asking you to do that. What's the difference between these people I described uh, when you know I was working back in, in New York State and the folks in Dealey Plaza? It's a great question. I'm Thank you for sharing um, this this terribly tragic story um, of Mr. Haywood and his wife. And um, I you know I hope that our viewers learned a lot from you. I, I know that that you know it's it, it's daunting to talk to an attorney and. Um, you know, the more information we put out there, the better. And so, uh, Jim DeSimone, uh, thank you very much for being here, and, and I very much appreciate it. Dr. Tracy, my pleasure. It's very good to be part of this show, and, and I appreciate you getting this information out there to people. It's important. Thank you. We're going to have you back. <laughs> I look forward to that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, and these these conspiracy theories, you know, are, are, are exactly that. Um, people who have died of COVID who were anti-vax regretted not getting that vaccine. There are plenty of, of videos and plenty of pleas on behalf of families uh, that have lost those loved ones. Um, you know, unfortunately uh, for Jim's client, the vaccine wasn't available. But I, I can imagine that he would have taken it and he would have taken it so that he would have been safe. He beat cancer twice but he got killed by COVID because he caught it at work. <sighs> Tonight was a great show and I, I really appreciate um, Jim's participation in it. Um, I hope you learned a lot. Um, my goal here is to make sure that we dive deeper and we turn that knowledge meter, we turn that needle on the knowledge meter to more. And I hope that that's what happened for you tonight.